Okay, in this section, let us learn all about chemical reactions. So, as we covered before, chemical reactions basically are written representations, um, a chemical equation, sorry, are written representations of what's happening in the reaction and where we're going to, we can either talk about the names of things or we can write down the chemical simula, symbols and the formulas. And we put an arrow to indicate the direction of the reaction because sometimes we can have the same molecules and the and the reaction can go in either direction. So we need to know what direction we are talking about at the time. Um, usually though, we will list the reactants on the left and they're gonna be consumed to make the product on the right. <coughs> As we talked about before, water is very important and the various chemical reactions in our life. And for many of the reactants in our body, it's either going to be a reactant or a product. And we're going to talk about the names that we give to these reactions in a later slide. Um, I also talked about um, if, if other molecules were attracted to water or if they were um, had an aversion to water, we talked about them being hydrophilic. If they were polar or they were negatively, or they were positively charged or if they were um, Hydrophobic if they were not ionized or they were nonpolar. So if whether you are negatively or positively charged, you're going to be hydrophilic because remember water has both a side that is positively charged on the side with the hydrogen ions and a negatively charged on the side with the oxygen. So both positively and negatively charged ions are going to be hydrophilic when it comes to water. Okay, so let's go and talk about acids and bases. And for that, let's break down water into its two components. And that is a hydrogen ion, which is hydrogen with a positive charge. It is a cation and a hydroxide ion, which is an oxygen and a hydrogen put together, which has a negative charge and an ion. So an acid is defined at this course is anything that's going to be releasing hydrogen ions. And a base basically is going to be something that is going to be accepting those hydrogen ions from solution. Usually it's going to be combining those hydrogen ions with a hydroxide ion to form water. Okay. And an another word, a synonym for a base is to say that something is alkaline. And we measure that on a pH scale. And notice in the word pH, it's a lowercase p and a capital H because that stands for potential hydrogen. So when we look at the pH scale, it goes from zero to 14. And at one end, we are going to have lots and lots and lots of hydrogens and very few hydroxides. And at the other end, we're going to have lots and lots and lots of hydroxides and very little hydrogens. So if you have lots and lots and lots of hydrogen, you might think at first, oh, that's a high pH. But in fact, a high hydrogen content is a low pH. So lots of hydrogen ion means a low pH. And lots of hydroxide ion means a high pH. So when we have an equal amount of both of them, then we are going to be neutral. So if we have a low pH, we are said to be acidic. We've got lots of hydrogen ion. And if we have very low hydrogen ion concentration, we are said to be basic. And so looking at the pH scale, it goes from zero to 14, with seven being considered neutral. So if you were below 
example seven, you are acidic. And so examples of things that are acidic, you know, from tasting it would be lemon juice and vinegar. Also, and there would be battery acid. And in fact, normal rain is slightly acidic and acid rain in the Northeast because of all the construction companies um, has an even lower pH around three and four. And that's why there's a lot of deforestation going on. At the other end of the scale, we have baking soda, which is alkaline with a pH around eight or nine. Milk of magnesia, which people often take when they have reflux from gastric acid going in their esophagus. By the way, your gastric acid has a pH of between one and two. So it's more acidic than your lemon juice. Um, that's why it's going to be neutralized by milk of magnesia or by um, lanta things that either have magnesium or ammonia in them. Um, and so they have very high pHs in them. Water has a pH of seven. However, we know now due to modern man, our water doesn't have a pH. So in order to do lab experiments, we actually have to bring our water down to a pH or up to a pH of seven. So when we are doing lab experiments, we actually provide water with a pH of seven to be used in lab experiments. Okay. Now I didn't give you a slide on this, but I want to talk about what a buffer is so that you understand the concept. A buffer is a molecule that helps prevent a pH change if an acid or a base is added. And the way it does it is some buffers will accept a hydrogen ion if it's added and other buffers will accept a hydroxide add if from an added base. So if we look here on the left, if we had water with a pH of seven and we added an acid to it, the pH could fall to three if we tested it. Um, whereas if we put water with a buffer, we added the same amount of acid, the pH might only fall to 6.8. And that could keep you in a normal range of homeostasis. Now, a pH of 6.8 is not normal for a human, but it could be for a different organism. And similarly, if we took the normal pH of 7 and we added a base, it could bring the pH up to 11.5. But adding a buffer to the water could only range that, elevate that pH to a 7.2 and thereby allow that organism to continue living. So in humans, it's critical to maintain our pH homeostasis. We have a very narrow range of pH. And by the way, our normal pH is not 7.0. If our pH is 7.0, we're probably dead. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit later in the course about our normal pH and that normal range. And so we have three main systems that keep our pH in homeostasis. And in this course, you don't really have to learn about them. But what I want you to understand is we have different buffer systems that work in different parts of our body. And so in our extracellular fluid, in other words, outside of our cells, including in our blood, we have a major buffer system that works there. Inside of our cells, we have a we have two different buffer systems that work. And then we have different systems that work in our urine to return um, substances back into our blood to keep us in, in a normal pH homeostasis. So here I have some quick think questions for you to stop this um, video and see if you can answer these questions. And when you are done, once again, do your study skills for this section before you move on to the next video. And thank you so much for working so hard in this course. And I'll see you shortly.